Thank you, Keith. Oh, thank you, Keith. Thank you for, for the song. Thank you. Good morning. I just want to greet the people that have recently come on. Good morning, Heather. Good morning, Carleen. Welcome to another morning here on the platform. And good morning, Pastor Grace. I can see that you're on. Good morning. I hand over to you. Good morning, all. Morning. Morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah. Thank you, Donna, again. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, as well. God bless you both. Oh, I really just um, watering the platform with prayer this morning. You know, you guys do a faithful job. We come on here. We pray before we start because we just need to make sure that we commit everything to God. We want to make sure that every heart are, are watered and prepared to hear the word, that it will not fall on dry ground, but the word, the word would fall on good soil. Good soil is where the seed is not eaten up by the, by the birds or it's not choked by the, the thorns. And we know what the thorns are. The thorns are the cares of this world and the things that we're encountering. But the Lord wants us, the seed, to fall on good ground. And the good ground is our hearts this morning, that the seed will be sown in our heart, that it can bear much fruit and that our fruit will remain. You know, we are fruit bearers we bear fruit because um it's not by our gifts it's not by our our works it's by the fruit the bible said it's by their fruit you shall know them and uh we, we know the fruit of the spirit is what is it it's love fruit of the spirit is love and all the other fruits are a produce of love like gentleness you can't be gentle if you're aggressive you haven't got the love of god in you gentleness kindness patience yeah long suffering all these fruits is what we are we're here to bear good good fruit in our lives so this morning i just want to thank each and every one of you for for joining and uh we, we welcome you we we welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit this morning and we know God never ever fails to speak to us and we know he's got another word that he wants us to hear. So I just thank God for each and every one of you um, joining. We have got a beautiful speaker again this morning and um, I'm just going to introduce her now and no other than... Heather, <laughs> Heather, <laughs> let's show us some love, everyone. <laughs> show us some welcome. love. Welcome, welcome, Heather. Welcome, Heather. Morning. I'm going to Morning. send you a love heart. <laughs> love, 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 Heather. Thank you so much. Um, God bless you so much, Heather. Over to you. Uh, Over to you, Heather. Okay, morning. Uh, can you... <laughs> I'm firing up the laptop. One second. Um... <laughs> Uh, second. How's everyone this morning? We're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> okay. Uh, awesome. Um, I'm going to get right into it. Um, hopefully it's not going to be long. Um, I think if my phone rings about 9.30, 10, I, I probably have an appointment. So, um, I don't know, it's just like yesterday, the Lord dropped something in my um, spirit. And um, I was so happy I was dancing in in the front room, like the song really uh, ministered to me and I was dancing in the front room. And it was so much that um, I just wanted to share, you know, and um, the Lord is dropping other things in, in my spirit. And um, there was one, if I, if I should have a theme, it's, um, it's uh, 
uh, it's they that wait, wait upon the Lord, you know, and waiting upon the Lord, you can, uh, what do you do in the meantime while you're waiting? How, how do you uh, build your faith, especially when you've been waiting for a long time for something that the Lord might have uh, dropped in your spirit, or you might have had a um, prophetic word about something. What do you do in the meantime? Do you continue to intercede and pray about it and remind the Lord that God, you know, you said this was going to happen and five years has passed, 10 years has passed and, and nothing, nothing has happened. Um, <clears throat> just what, what do you do in the meantime? And, um, the so that came in mind and uh, and i had the thought obviously the song they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength so um i don't know if someone can find the scripture for me and we could just read just a little bit of of that scripture that would be the just one scripture this morning that would be the theme because uh, <clears throat> i wanted to share just to lift our faiths uh, uh a testimony from uh, Bishop Fernandez. Um, <clears throat> the one that I had in mind in particular was the, he had an interview and he was sharing how him and his wife got into ministry and he had a prophetic word um, that they were going to be able to have children. And um, <clears throat> they were marrying people and they were. Um, People were having children in the church. The church was growing. They were having baby dedication and they weren't able to have children. So they tried all different kinds of um, treatment. I think they probably went to the stage where they tried IVF and uh, nothing, nothing happened. And he started saying to God, come on, it's been five years, it's been 10 years. We've done so many weddings. We've done so many um, baby christening and still we are without uh, children. They weren't able to um, produce for themselves or have a seed. So, um, so 10 years pass, 12 years pass, nothing happened. 15 years pass, nothing happened. So by now they have decided that okay um they might just go ahead and adopt because they maybe they heard the lord wrong maybe the lord meant that they will have children but they they need to adopt children so they were thinking of adopting so they started going through i think the process the paperwork and all of that to adopt a child and now by that time it had gotten to 17 years. Now that's a long time to wait, you know? And in the 17th year, his wife conceived. I think they finished the application. I don't think they got through with adopting because the wife conceived. And they, she not only had one child, she had two children after that. So they ended, ended up with three children. Now these are uh, people, they're ministers of the gospel. So they're in the front line all the time. So if you just maybe put it in your thought, um, they're doing baby dedication all the time, yet they're believing God. Now that would have been enough for them to be uh, disappointed and, um, and lose hope and faith in, in the ministry. But they didn't, they, they, they hung on to the word of the Lord and not that during the process this was, wasn't irritating either, you know? And there's a scripture that says, so I couldn't find it. I searched, I searched, I searched last night and I couldn't find that uh, interview, but I found something else that he also shared, which was um, that I would like to share a little bit of uh, with you as well. So, um, so um, and the scripture- Isaiah 40, 31. Yes, that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. And one of the in one of the songs I was listening to last night, it was the mind was talking about the eagle. And um, there's an eagle 
caught in the fence and uh, the eagle was trying to get out of the fence. So everything the eagle tried to do, the eagle couldn't get out of the fence. But he was saying if the eagle would have only just looked up, if the eagle looked up, then he would realize that he could fly up and out of the fence. But he was trying to get through the fence. And in the end, the eagle, that particular eagle gave up and rested because there was a dog outside the fence and he tried about 10 times, the eagle tried and he couldn't get out the fence from different corners. And the man was just saying, if the eagle would only look up, you know, and, um, that's symbolic if we could only look up look up to christ christ who is our um redeemer christ is our, is our helper and one one thing about the eagle the eagle is meant to soar high um and the eagle builds its nest in the highest part of the tree and another thing the gentleman was sharing about the eagle was that um it it it, it is able to replenish itself not in the sense of um, not in the sense of changing the way how it looks. Say if the eagle is um, twenty years old, it's not able to change the way how it looks, but is it's able to re to replenish itself in the sense of its its strength. So he could still have the strength of say when it was uh, ten years old, whatever, because they have the ability to shed and replenish themselves in terms of their strength. So the eagle is always able to soar, to soar high. And that was quite um, like uh, notable, you know? So um, I'm not sure if that's all of the scripture because I didn't really write it down because I said it's not mm -hmm. gonna, I'm not gonna be doing a lot of talking, but one of the things after sharing the, um, the, little snippet from Bishop Fernandez, what I would like us to do is, you know, we could just maybe put one thing on our mind that the Lord has spoken to us about, and um, we haven't seen the manifestation of it. And I don't want us to pray about it. I just want us to maybe unmute and take five minutes and give God thanks for even just one thing that we could remember that we know We've been waiting for a long time for the manifestation of it. Um, some of it, some for some people, it might be pertaining to ministry. Like the Lord might have said something to you pertaining to ministry that, you know, um, you're going to be doing certain things and you don't see the manifestation of it. I know m myself personally, there's a lot of been a lot of prophetic words over my life and. Um, I, I haven't really, I've been told, okay, fine. There's, there's a level of anointing that I'm meant to walk in, but uh, I haven't, what's the word? I'm not walking in it as yet. It's not time. And I was in myself, I'll be honest. I was like saying, okay, Lord, you said this. I know there's something there, but when, when is this, when is this going to happen? And, um, the Lord used someone to remind me the other day, um, not that I asked for priority and ask for a prophetic word. And the lady was able to say to me that, um, you know, for some of us, the Lord just wants us to be seasoned, seasoned with the word. So it's not that you're not growing, but so, for some of us, uh, she she described it as if, you know, you put on some colored greens or fresh greens and you, you steam it and it's nice and it's crunchy. But also, you know that we make pickles, right? We put pickles and we put it to soak and we put it to ferment sometimes or prunes. If you're, those of you are cake makers, you put it to set sometimes for a year, especially if you're making Christmas cakes and you put it aside for, for a year for it to ferment. So it, it is soaking in, everything so when you put it in the cake the cake has a totally uh unique taste to it because you've allowed it so i'm like that like i'm fermenting then if you say the word so um so when it's time for god to elevate me to that uh area uh in terms of ministry i'll be seasoned 
you know? So my words would be seasoned. And I was like, okay. So that was comforting in a way, you know, because obviously I'm 50 now <laughs> and I'm saying, okay, I know you said that. I know you said that. And sometimes you walk into a setting and you see certain things and you, and I say, God, but didn't you say, I'm going to be doing this, whatever. And, but you can't run ahead of God. You know, God has a set time for you to do something. And as long as you continue to walk in his will, and there's one thing too, God is not going to put you before people if you're not ready. So you can be waiting a long time, but what are you doing in the meantime while you're waiting? Are you um, seasoning yourself with the word? Because you can go up before people and you've got no word in you. And how are you going to uh, deliver and how are you going to uh, combat the enemy? Because you have to combat the enemy with the word. And I notice a lot of time when you, when you move into ministry, sometimes when... Um, you're not doing much. The enemy is not too bothered with you. <laughs> but as soon as you step forward that, okay, I'm going to do ministry. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Then you see the enemy comes in. I've seen it a lot. Like a lot of people get uh, ordained and had hands laid on them for ministry. And within six months, I don't see them again. And they've been coming to church for a long time. But as soon as they step forward in ministry, the attacks from the enemy come that is so fierce that they're not prepared for it and they they can't handle it and then you don't see them no more six months one year after like half of them they're gone i see it happen over and over again so i'm not hasty i don't want to rush into something until i'm ready or or until the lord sees that i am i am ready but yes you know that there is that waiting period you know, that you have to go through. So I just wanted to share uh, that snippet. Um, now, I know the scripture from my heart. I don't know if I've said the scripture in the full entirety of the verse. So I don't know if someone wants to read it for me again, just in case I missed any part of the scripture. Um, okay, my laptop is coming on now. Or I'll try to. Recording in progress. I can read it from the. I can read it from the amplified. Yes, please. It says, "But though, um, this is Isaiah chapter chapter forty, verse thirty-one." Mm -hmm. It says, but those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him, will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles rising towards the sun they will run and not become weary they will walk and not grow tired amen uh thank you for that uh pastor grace so um like like i was saying um we don't want to remind God of something that he already knows and, and he's already promised us. So we just want to give God thanks for it. If we're going to pray for anyone in particular concerning something they're waiting on, then uh, maybe just to pray for uh, your faith, that your faith will increase during the, 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 the period of, of waiting. And when you're in the period of waiting, it's good to uh, encourage yourself with testimonies, like faith testimonies from other people who have been through a waiting period or been through something. Just fill yourself with testimonies because it keeps your hope up and it keeps your hope alive as well. And um, I like guess one of the prior points we can have, uh, I was listening to a minister the other day and um, obviously this is relating to the situation in Ukraine. 
and um, we remembered what God did to Nebuchadnezzar. Um, you know that he he ended up eating grass. He was like an animal, you know. And so God can remove Putin out of the way uh, if we pray, you know. And if we, as a church, I don't know what was. Uh, it just made me think, <clears throat> what what happened to the church at the time of Hitler? You know, um, was the church earnestly praying at that time? Uh, I can't say. We don't know, but we can pray that the Lord remove him out of the way because he's flesh and bone like ourselves. I mean, he's walking around, he's got security, but <clears throat> the Lord could just, I mean, the Lord killed all the firstborns in, in, in um, the time of Egypt. Now, if he's gonna be stubborn and not want to yield and, you know, obviously he's got a bigger hidden agenda the Lord is the giver of life and the breath that we breathe is from God, you know? So he could go to bed and not wake up the next morning. Now, is there going to be someone else carrying out his assignment if he's not in the picture? You know, we're, I'm not saying that, yes, okay, kill him moving out, out of the way because we don't know what God has uh, in terms of God's plans for him because that's a soul, you know? But God can deal with him as he sees fit. So if we, we can add that as a PowerPoint, because it's something that is current and it's something that is happening um, as we speak. You know, we, we have to be mindful of people that are experiencing or going through atrocities. You know, we might not be experiencing it on this side, but we have to remember there's mothers, there's children who are forced out of their homes, got nowhere to live, and also to pray for people to get like a safe escort to a place of safety and um, food, shelter, et cetera. So we can add that in today. Um, I'm not gonna play all of the, the snippet from Pastor Fernandez. So um, I'll be able to say Keith went to stop, but just to get the, that testimony of faith that he shared, I think it was quite um, powerful while I was listening to it. So I've got a little song to play just to prepare your hearts. And uh, Keith, if you don't mind playing that song for me by uh, Nathaniel Bassi. By it. Um. I hope you were blessed by it. I, I couldn't say it. He had, I just had to let you hear it uh, for yourself. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to, uh, uh, that's a, the, the devotion really. And um, <laughs> I just wanted to share that with you. It really blessed my, uh, my heart. It wasn't what I was looking for, but it was good, just the same. And um, what I wanted was to do is to, just something, uh, just to get something on our minds that we are believing God for. God has spoken to us and we, you know, like I said before, and we're not going to ask him for it. We're, we're going to give him thanks. We're going to really believe by faith that with his um, perfect timing, <clears throat> there is no delay with God and uh, his perfect timing will, will manifest what what we are believing uh, God for. So um, I, if anybody wants to share anything um, based on that, um, we, I can open up for a couple of minutes. And if anybody wants to, to comment or share, you know, I love to interact with you guys and for everyone, everyone has, uh, everyone received differently and everyone's perception is differently. So. Um, we can't put God in a in a box. God is who God is to you, and your you know experience with God and of God. So I just, if anybody wants to share anything, it's open up now, and um, and also bear in mind we just want to have some time to give God thanks for that which we're believing for, and also uh, any prayer requests, and we want it. We want to pray for Ukraine as well. So I'll just open up if anyone wants to comment or share. Uh, Fiona's hand is up. Okay. 
Good morning, Heather. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to say that um, what you presented to this morning has been yeah. life changing from the perspective of um, reminding me of, you know, sometimes you are in a lull and you feel like, God, how, how much longer? How much longer? How, you know, and you can and you can make that feeling and emotion if you're not careful over uh, overwhelm you. And that reminder that sometimes look to God. Bye. Fiona, you're muted. One moment, please. Just one moment. Um, yeah, I just I just felt very, very strongly that you were encouraging a chain was broken today. A chain was broken. Mm -hmm. And um, and that sorry. And that, that chain of the reminding that sometimes you think that nothing's happening, but you don't have to look with your eyes, your heart, and believe what he tells you and stand, and doing all to do, stand, stand. But thank you. I wanted to thank you Amen. for the encouragement and for the reminder through the Holy Spirit of what he is doing and, and what you should be looking at. Thank Amen. you. Amen. 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 Ah, yeah. Thank you, Fiona. I think Sister Dolores, or I don't yes, know. Yes, sorry, I'm, a, I'm walking down the road. I'm going to work, but I just say, you know, you really blessed my heart this morning. Amen. Really overwhelming. Thank you so much. Thank Amen. you so much. That was really nice. Amen. Thank you. Amen. It's good. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Um, I'm not sure. I think Keith, I'm not sure in the order um, for hands. Yeah, that was such a powerful, powerful illustration. It was, I call it the injection that's needed. <laughs> especially nowadays, especially nowadays with pandemic and, and booster injections. This was our booster. This was our, <laughs> our vaccine. Amen, this amen. was our medication. Amen. This was our medication to change. And in the, the blood, like, I'm not, I can't put my camera on today. I'm charging That's, that's right, Keith. You, you said the right word. Yes, it was, it was literally <laughs> what we needed this morning. Amen. Because all of us have that, that acquisition in time when you go somewhere. It's not about why you're going. It's knowing wherever God sends you to go in whatever situation, what you're waiting for, <laughs> what you're waiting for, just put your faith in it. Amen. The illustration that everybody, did you notice with the wife? And when he said, man, it's like, a, I, I haven't seen the video before, but this is the first thing that I always say, whether you're in a couple, whether you're in marriage, I say the same thing. What happens to the vows when your circumstances hit the fan? Mm. <laughs> your circumstances, let me emphasize it, mm -hmm. your circumstances. We all know the other term, the other saying, but I'm not saying it because I'm a, I'm a believer in Christ and my, my mouth has to come forth right. Amen. What happens when your circumstances hit the fan? Firstly, mm -hmm. the doubt will come. Mm -hmm. Those that will follow you will doubt. They come on. She was happy to put things in the cart. This is the same mm -hmm. thing with everything. This is the revelation that I've got. And there's so many of them. But this is the revelation that I'm going to get to every person on the platform. Because I feel it has to be shared. Thank you, Lord. Everybody is happy to put things in the basket. Imagine if they had children. They're going to be dashing things in the basket too. But when it came to the point... The joy when, oh, I could have this and we mm. could have, you know, 
we can have some fried chicken tonight. You know, we can have this, we can have that, we can have, oh man, mm. imagine what the meal would taste like with, you know, a bit of asparagus. We know how much asparagus costs, but yet it goes off so quickly, but yet you dash it in the cart anyway. You'll be doing all of these things. It could be the same thing for look for shopping for a vehicle. You will go and, oh yeah, mm-hmm. well, you know, I could have, I could have my tinted windows and my, my shiny rims that spin backwards when I'm not moving. I mean, it's so weird to me, but that's what people do, the spinners. Mm-hmm. And they will shop and shop and shop and shop and shop. And when it gets to the till, they think, Jesus, where's this money coming from? Oh, um, let me, how much would it be if I started to take back? How much would it be if I started to put it aside? How much would it be if I, but if God sent you, if God sent you, the key factor is, is when it came to the till, I'm going to go stand outside because all she was concerned about, the partner, I'm not going to say she or he, because it can be either side. If God told you to do something and God told you to trust in him, it doesn't matter what your gender is. Because remember, we're married unto God in sickness and in health, better or worse, richer or poorer, better or worse. It's not the marriage to the partner. This is the part that I'm, I'm, I'm actually turning what you thought I was going to say into something God showed me. We're married unto God. And that's a ring that doesn't need to be placed on. It doesn't need to be taken off. It's not something that when you go into a shower, it needs to be removed. It's something that is already imprinted onto us. Already Amen. imprinted. It's already engaged. It's the greater inside of us. But what we tend to forget, we forget the greatness and we, we stop at the smallness. We stop at the fact of, ooh, at the till. Ooh, at the, uh, oh, how am I going to look? Okay, let's, let's turn that around. How are you going to look when the glory starts raining through, when the goodness Amen. starts illustrating? Amen. <laughs> look at how powerful that is. It's a marriage to God. It's not a marriage to flesh. That you are blessed to be married to a partner. But it's not just for the, 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 the fact that, the, I, I keep saying it a lot on different platforms, be careful of the Pharisee spirit. And I'm glad, glad, as soon as he grabbed, he said that he grabbed her arm to, man, stand with me now. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I thought. Stand with me. Let me show you about the faith that I have. It's not the faith my husband has. It's the faith that we all can have. We all Amen. should have. We all can, can, can work in, walk in, stand in, move in, achieve things through. Amen. That's what really spoke out to me. That's where the tears started to fall because at the end of the day, when he used the word, the checkout. I'm using this in every existence with your health. As soon as you go to the doctor, you hear some news that doesn't ring true or normal. But at the end of the day, think of it this way. Who's going to get the glory out of it? When you talk about it, who's going to get the glory out of it? When you find out things, who's going to get the glory out of it? God. And in God, you're actually testifying of the goodness of God that it can happen for you. Then somebody else is going to think, yeah, that's me. I want to be next, Lord. I want to be the one that's going to, I can do this, the Lord. I can do all things. I can stand in all things. I can present all things. I can attain all things. I can overcome all things. I can be recover from all things. I can present through all things. I can illustrate through all things. It keeps going. It keeps going. That snippet of a clip was like, hmm. That was the injection I needed, Lord. That was the, the wow. You know, like when you go on holiday and you think to yourself, oh, you need to cover yourself in protection. So they give you that, that annoying jab. Why does it always have to be in the backside, the biggest muscle? And you think, <laughs> oh, I need to get this thing. And I thought, wow, Lord, the reason why is because you need in that fire in your backside to prove and trust that that faith, that faith, faith that's going to get you from the the place that you are residence now to the residence that god's going to place you in that faithful injection is necessary we all needed this this is a wake up this is a hmm, breakfast lunch and dinner right now (laughs) served in one course one solid medication in in influential positioning (laughs) this is something we all needed know this God, through faith, can move mountains. We've been talking about this. 
And his was, man, 480,000 to 7.7 million to shopping cart. And you only married a week ago with the reminders of the vows. But whose vows mm-hmm. do you say them under? It's the relationship triangle. I always say this to people. It's not just you saying it to the husband in front of all the witnesses. The biggest witness is above you that sanctioned you two to come together. That's the one you're marrying to, you're promising to, and you're honoring by them being by your side. But be careful of the Pharisee spirits. When you hear them, these are spirits that will called seeds of doubt according to law. This is what they did in the Bible. They were so strict on the law that their faith wasn't processing. Their faith wasn't illustrating. It was the almost lack of faith because they were so, oh, well, God said this and God does this and does this. They limited what God could do. Don't allow yourself to be limited by any Pharisee spirit. If God said to you, you know what? That Mercedes Benz that you've been looking at, you should be driving. Don't be thinking, oh, well, it's a gas guzzler. And it's got, man, what are you telling me that God didn't create something that he wouldn't have orchestrated for you? Your faith has to be in it. Don't look at what other people will think of you, see in you. That's what the, the, the pastor was saying. Imagine having to go to somebody and you just, well, how much do you need? And he just asked a straight question. How much do you need? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. Why do we do that? Why, <laughs> why do we do that? We shun ourselves. We shun the presence of God. And it's not like you're denying him. We shun it. We put it to the side. We, buy, we, we deflect it. And I keep saying this acronym, FINE. When you hear it, mm, be careful of it. FINE stands for freaked out, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. None of those things are good. They're all negative. They're all negative. Be careful of utilizing your words, because remember life and death, but that, that the, the man that gave him the money, I'm not even going to say lent him. He said he didn't say he had to pay it back. He said, how much do you need? And they just wire transferred it. That's going to happen for us. Amen. Don't look at the bill. Look at the God who can pay the bill. Amen. Believe me, I'm in the same boat. And that man, yes, thank, thank you, Sister Heather. That was, whew, that, that was, yeah, that was, <laughs> Now, not just a little lighter up my backside. That was like, I'm sitting on heat right now. And I know that I'm not being singed. It's just to ignite me so that I can get jet propulsing to the place that God is going to place me. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. God bless you, Keith. God bless you. Mm-hmm. Anyone else wants to share? Uh... I just want to say thank you, Heather. That was so powerful. Amen. And- Clearly, faith comes by hearing, and uh, hearing that testimony today is what's going. Keith is talking about it has ignited all of us. Amen. And, um, you know what was so amazing is that um, when God tells you to do something, it's it's so important to follow that instruction, even if it looks ridiculous. For you to be yeah. in a supermarket picking up groceries and you've got no money. I'm telling you, you're you're walking by faith. And to know that you know that God told you to do it that. You know, there's there's different types of faith. You can be presumptuous. If you didn't really hear God and you just thought, oh, let me just do that. That's that that's a difference. That's that's not acting on the uh, the word of God. But once you've heard that word and you follow it through, mm-hmm. you can expect God to come through for you. So I'm just so um blessed this morning that you know whatever we're believing for he said state your claim i like that i wrote that down state your claim amen (laughs) state your claim and just you know say god i know you're gonna do this speak it like you have it already and uh watch what god's gonna do you know that song that you play look what the lord has done um i went to a wedding two weeks ago and they played that song and it just so blessed Bless me to see um, this couple that um, God had joined them together supernaturally. Um, you know, they, they had little finances, but they just knew it was God that put them together and they were going to have this wedding, not knowing how it was going to come off, not knowing how, um, what God was going to do, but they stepped out in faith. They set the date and when I was at that wedding and they was playing that song, 
I had tears in my eyes. I really was uh, over, overwhelmed. Just see what the Lord has done. You, you trust God and see God come through for you. It's just the most wonderful feeling in the world to see God in his glory right Amen. before your eyes. It's, it, it's phenomenal. Amen. So thank you for the song as well. I, I love that song. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for me, myself, it's been um, um, listening to Pastor Fernandez as well reminded me that um, I had to reflect that my, my journey and my walk has been a walk of faith as well. Like, um, just even yesterday, I was having a, a chat with my next door neighbors and they have the off license shop next to me. And she was telling me that her son, you know, she was telling her son, you know, it's time, he's 28. You know, he needs to have a girlfriend and he needs to get married. You know, they're Indian, Hindu. And she said they didn't want to necessarily go the cultural way by the arranged marriage. They wanted to, you know, give him the opportunity. So she was saying, yeah, he found a girlfriend and we met her. She's really nice. And they're getting married next year. They've already set the date and everything. I said, oh, oh, really? She said, yes, we met the family and they both do similar stuff with work. And she was showing me pictures. They've had little functions already and stuff like that. And I said, you, oh, you don't wait. You don't waste that. She said, yes. And, you know, we're going to buy, we're going to buy my house and all of that. And she said, we, we want you and the kids to come as well. You know, we want you to come to the wedding. And I said, oh, oh, wow. So she was showing me the picture and stuff. And I said, oh, yeah, the sari and stuff looks really nice. Well, she said, yes, you'd wear a sari. I said, yes, I would. She said, oh, I'll, I'll get you one. What, what color do you like? And <laughs> I was like, um, I think maybe pink, like pink or red, something like that. She said, no problem. I'll get you a sari, everything. And you and the kids come and we'll, we'll pay for the taxi, everything to take you there and take you back home. And I was like, Oh, these are my next door neighbors. They have, they have been such a blessing to me. They're like a uh, family, you know? And um, so funny enough, I went to my bed and I dreamt I was at the wedding. And I literally, I know I had the conversation fine, but I actually dreamt, I saw myself at the wedding and, and I walked past the son and the his, fia, his bride. And I walked past and I sat next to the bride and I saw her face. I was talking to her. And then I was saying to the son that, oh, she has a temperament of his sister, you know? And I was like, that was weird <laughs> to, you know, to have that dream. But uh, today is also a, a special day, like my daughter's birth. And she was saying, mom, uh, you know, because every year I normally, um, put balloons in her room the night before her birthday. So she wake up and it's filled with balloons and whatever age she is and presents hanging off her door. But this year I couldn't really do that because of you know finances and timing. Like I get paid literally the day after her birthday. But you know, when you tell kids, I'm sure they're understanding, but God still made a way. Like everything she said she wanted today when she comes home, she doesn't know it. It will be here. The cake, the balloons, everything that she wanted will, will be here this afternoon because God, uh, some two people wired <laughs> funds to me just last night, you know? And um, their dad, sometimes he's, he's funny. He will promise to do something and then you don't hear from him in like two weeks. He's not answering his phone, nothing. And next thing I hear, he's on holiday. I was like, oh, okay. But then he wired some funds to for their uh, her birthday today. And I was like, okay. And then my sister in New York wired some funds to me as well. And I was like, okay, I can get her her cake and I can get the balloons and stuff. So I'm still gonna get it blown up, whatever. So she has no idea. So when she comes home from college, it will be everything that she said she wanted. And that I noticed my walk has been a walk of faith, literally. Because you know, sometimes when it's paycheck to paycheck and you have a bill to pay and you have to pay that bill out of what you budgeted, it offsets everything else for the rest of the month. 
So this uh, month or the last couple of weeks, it's been really every week faith because for, for her college, it's like almost 200 plus for her to commute to Reigate to, to school. And um, although she has a discount because she travels early, she has to pay like 10 pounds a day to, to go to college. So that's about 200 and some pounds a month. And that's not lunch, whatever. But the Lord, she hasn't missed a day of school for the last couple of weeks. You know, she hasn't missed a day of school. And I've seen how God just, just come through. So now I don't even pray for stuff. I, I just like, the Lord knows my needs before, before I even speak it. And he'll just have somebody come, bless me with something, bless me there, bless me here, bless me with some money, whatever. And I give God thanks. It's been, it's been a, a journey and it's been a walk of faith. And I've got that confidence in God that I'm not worrying about anything. Cause she was saying, mom, remember, you know, remember. And I said, God, this child, <laughs> you know, I said, God, this child, she's asking for this and that. Are you gonna come through? And he did, you know? So it's not the big things. Like I said, it's the little things, the little things that all sum up. And I realized that my walk is also a walk of, of faith. So I have a lot to give God thanks for uh, today. And also, um, she's got another offering as well from another university. And I was like, God, I said, by the time next couple of weeks, you're going to have offers in from all of them. So you can pick and choose which one you want to go to. And that's God, because you all remember the, the struggle, even the school didn't want her to come back uh, September. And I had to appeal and write a letter to them. And then she had to sign this contract, whatever. And she's been, you know, consistent, doing her best. You know, that's all I ask, do your best and let God do the rest. But it's been a faith walk. So I give God thanks. I can relate to uh, his, his testimony, not for the millions, but for the small things. We give God thanks, just nevertheless, because if we can give God thanks for the little things, then he'll reward us with, with, with the bigger things. So if anyone else wants to share, I was just sharing my little bit there. <clears throat> Everyone's quiet this morning. Everyone <laughs> soaking, soaking in the mm -hmm. word. I hope it was a blessing to you all. Mm -hmm. And um, okay, I'll give Give you a couple more minutes. Oh, okay. yeah, junior, yeah, junior, go go junior. Ahead, junior. <laughs> uh, bless you. Um, uh, thank you for I think you boosted the platform this morning with that uh, Amen. <laughs> that lovely uh, ministration in songs and also uh, via the testimony of the pastor as well. But one thing I'd like to mention, you see, a lot of us are. Uh, when we hear this message, we automatically, our mind goes to, God's going to bless me one day. God's going to do it for me. But if you listen to what he says, he mentioned a key word. And I think most probably, most people probably missed this, right? Mm. He says, those that hunger for God, hunger for God, not hunger mm. for the things that you can gain, but hunger for god and i'm always having a problem with this when uh when when you kind of like speak to well anyway that, that's just my issues but look it's the hunger for god that drives him to just bless you regardless Amen. bless you bless you regardless and this is one of the key things why i want to bring uh, uh out of that message this morning i'm always coming from another angle uh, no but <laughs> hunger for God. Amen. Most of us on here, we are looking for something. We are asking for something. And we could all identify with that part when he says that God has blessed me with what I've asked for. And he's gone over and beyond. Yes. But Matthew 6, 33. And this becomes a key scripture on this, this platform. Seek. E first. If anyone tells me ever 
that's on this platform. They don't know what Matthew 633 is. We're going to have a serious problem <laughs> because this has been mentioned too many times. Mm -hmm. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness and all other things shall be added up. Mm -hmm. Let me mention that again. Matthew 6, 33. Seek he first. What does that mean? Seek his face first. Look to him first. Want him more first. Look after him. Like the deer panted after the water, so my soul mm -hmm. will pant after thee. Seek he first. Want him. A minister, I think I did a ministration a little while ago. And it, uh, what we find is people like to love the uh, provision, but not love the provider. And what mm -hmm. we're not realizing, if you have the source of uh, uh, let's just say the well of water inside of you because you seek him, because you get him things will just automatically pour out of your life to the point where you're broke at one point but out of your brokenness you're blessing someone else <laughs> yes that's true out of your brokenness mm -hmm. out of you being broke let me put it this way have no money, but you're still blessing. And I'm sure yes, Sister Grace can testify to this many a time. <laughs> so is my mom. She will be broke, but when she put a pot on, it's like the, the multiplication of loaves and fish. And people will come over from nowhere. You know, Jamaicans <laughs> have this saying, soon as you put the pot on, that your neighbor or someone else will just turn. They just run. It's a surprise they just turn up. They find and, you. Like, you yeah. They find you, man. And it's like you want to put, put the uh, pot underneath the bed, you know, like I think one of them Oliver plays or something like that. But, but the point remains, the point remains. Now, when you hunger after God, God will bless you even when you are broke, that you will never lack. You will never feel mm -hmm. like you're lack. A lot of people <laughs> look at Junior and say, but ha you, you seem like you always have it. But my, I came from nothing. I came from absolute, but my life always been blessed. I've never lacked. And I'll Amen. be honest with you. As David would have said, from the time I was young, I've never seen a righteous forsaken, no seeds begging bread. But David is a person who loved God in such a way that he was so clingy. <laughs> he just yeah. always wanted God. He didn't care if he didn't have anything and he had to sleep out on the cold, which he did many and many a times, by the way. But at the same time, he was broken, but he had God. That's why when the guy said, those that, are, he's talking to people that hunger for God, not hunger for what God can do for their lives. It's a difference. Yes, we all have struggles. Yes, we all have situation, but if you yet want God for him, for who he is, like the songwriter says, because of who you are, I will give you glory. Not because of what I could gain, I will give you glory. There's a difference. And everybody who is needing things on this platform, let me say to you, because of your dedication, coming on here every morning, feeding off the word of God, loving on God, you realize it now that it's not what you need you're coming on for, but you're coming on because you love God. Amen. And because you love God, God will turn things around in your life. Because you give God you and seek all the righteous way to live, hallelujah, because Amen. you now, you, what happened is, yes, we all come to, as, to Christ. Yes, we all come to Christ because we know what Christianity we hear of. If you come to God, God will bless you. If you come to God, God will change your life. If you come to God, ah, blah, blah, we are a transactional God. But when you now come unto God, coming out of the situation of your mindset of uh, God will provide always, to know that to, when you get into now the place where you say, God is my provider. Mm. Let me say that again. When mm -hmm. you have started your Christian walk, you heard that God will always provide. 
But when you come on to God and you go into a position, uh, into a different place to uh, maturity, you start saying, God is my provider. He is mine. He is, <laughs> he is sovereign to be there for me in season and out of season. You're Amen. not getting me this morning. Amen. You need to understand that even when the, Paul says, if I learn to be content in little, and I yeah. learned to be content in much. I've seen little and I've seen much. I've seen suffering. I've seen joy. But no matter what happened, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Mm -hmm. You see, soon as if we have the mindset as Christians <laughs> to always want a transactional God, what will happen is when that Let's just say that provision dry up, so to speak. What happened? Our faith dwindles. We step out. We go somewhere else. But when your faith is built on a solid foundation, and it's about God and not what he could provide, then God will provide all you need according to his glory. Hallelujah. Amen. This is what we need to get. People who are hunger for God, not hunger for what he could provide. Like when you have a rich, uh, a, a, a woman that marries a rich man. She only marry him because they call him these days gold diggers. Because, because, only because she see that he could provide. But soon as this man lost all his investment and he's gone broken, he lost the house and they're now in cooped up in a small shack. And it's not a palace anymore. It's not 26 bedrooms. It's now, it's now one. Then she start looking and goes, oh my God, I can't be with this man because he cannot now fund my lifestyle. But if that's the case, and this woman had been there hungering for the man, loving on the man, knowing that the man is who she wants, not the money, what happened when it goes down to zero, she will still be there to build up again, to help to build up. She probably will take two yeah. jobs just to help out with the bills. You're not hearing me this morning. You need to understand it's the hunger, the desire for God, not what Amen. you can gain. Don't get caught up in that situ in that lifestyle where you think that God is now going to bless me with the million dollars like he did the pastor man. Everybody's journey is different. You need yeah. to realize once I have God, I have it all. Amen. Once I have God, there's no more need for the, the things that I could see because I know that my God could provide it if he wants to. Because we are so consumed with our mindset of gaining, having things, always looking towards what we could see. But God says, only if you hunger for me. Amen. If you hunger for me, seek he first. I want you to make that be your scripture of prayer. And obviously I will pray afterwards. But let that be your scripture of prayer. That Lord, I will seek your faith. I will look for you. Mm -hmm. I will Hallelujah. try to do my best to do good mm -hmm. by my brothers and my sisters. Seek mm -hmm. after the righteousness of God. And I know, Father, that no matter what my situation, I will trust you because all things will come after. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Only if you put your trust in God, only if you hunger for him, only if you look to him. What do we practice on this platform? We practice the seek ye first. Because what will happen is that we come here every morning, we learn from lovely people like Heather, and hearing the words of God, but yet still we practice what we hear because we look after one another if one of if one of us on the platform is is uh in need and we place it and we make it be known like the pastor would say sometimes you know they go like uh uh yeah i'm fine i'm fine you're not really fine but once they make their needs known people on this platform pull together and bless each other i've witnessed mm -hmm. this i've been a testimony to this this my point is is that we are seeking after the righteousness of god we are thirsting after God because righteousness is the way of the Lord. So when we start to do that, God is saying, now they're focused on me. Now they're not focused on what they could gain. They're focused on even loving one another, for that fulfills the commandment. And when you start doing that, 
you start to say to God, I am now ready for you to bless me with provisions far beyond my expectation, as the word would say. He can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can think or ask us, all you can imagine, according to the power now that worketh in you, the spirit of God that worketh in you. So it's the hunger. You need to hunger after God, the source, not the provision that you could gain. Don't When mm-hmm. you're listening to all these uh, testimonies from these uh, pastors, whatever it is, and you hear their talk, don't concentrate only on the blessing side. As soon as you hear these things, a lot of people start thinking, yes, my blessing is going to come soon. But what about the love for God? (laughs) What about the heart for God? Because when you humble in that, God will do, he will pass over every single thing like you could even think or imagine. Let me just share this real quick and I'll I'll pray and I'll be quiet. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I promise you. Listen to this. So I was, I, I mentioned yesterday about, uh, I was on the prime meeting, you know, and there's only three of us as men or out of a church of a 20 odd uh, men. Can you imagine? <laughs> Over 20 odd men in, in a church. Uh, I haven't witnessed that too many times, unless it's a large church, but it's a small church, and for 20 odd men to be in there, <laughs> it's amazing. Nevertheless, there was only three men on the prime meeting. And while I was praying, and this, it was me, the pastor, and another brother. And while I was praying, and I was praying in the in the, in the sense of uh, praying for the men to be more desiring after God and hungering after God. And thank you, Heather, for bringing this uh, up today. That obviously confirmed things. But in my prayer, he stopped me halfway through, and he, he said something to me. And he says, "It's funny how when God gave the instructions, He gave the instructions to even Noah and to even to build his house. He gave specific." instructions specific instructions of how to lay the where to put the he gave specific instructions and they have to be followed to the t right yes Mm. now he said to me yes it takes a while to build a temple it takes a while to build the ark i think it's over 30 years now uh, (laughs) is, is going to build is building this ark it takes a while but he said to me, he said, but how long did it take even Jacob to build an altar? How long did it take him when he laid his head on a rock, when he was in his desperate, hallelujah, thank you, Father. When he was in his desperate moment, when he was going to, when, you remember when he, he betrayed his, his brother and he, you know, take his, take his blessing from the dad and he ran away uh, when he was going to his, his, his uh, uncle's house? Yes. And he laid his head on a rock, fell asleep there, and then he had a dream. The ladder was going ladder. to and fro, mm-hmm. right? The, the, the angels were going to and fro, uh, ascending and descending uh, on the ladder. He had a dream. What happened next? When he woke up, he gave God thanks, but he laid that place an altar. Hallelujah. He laid a, a, an altar there, but an altar of worship. I want you to get this this morning. It didn't take him very long to build this altar. (laughs) Hope I'm speaking to someone today. It didn't take him very long to build this altar. But the house of God took a while because it had to be precise. It had to be, or should say the temple of, the temple that was built so that the people could come worship God. It took a while. The ark took a while. Certain things that God tells us to rebuild the city took a while. But the altar of worship, if you read any part in the Bible where they made an altar, I think it was even David who made an altar every uh, 100 kilometers or something like that, whatever, an altar until he gets to, uh, with sacrifices on it. It didn't take them very long. What the Lord said to me is that a lot of us are trying to build this dream, build our vision. But they're not building it with worship. They're not building it unto me. They're not building it want to get close to me. They're not building it with what seeking hunger for me. They're not building it with that. The Bible tells you in Psalms 127 verse 1. (laughs) If then yet you build a house, if if you have a person that is, unless the Lord builds the house, the person who builds it, builds it in vain. 
Amen. Unless the Lord build a house. Where's your mm -hmm. hunger today? Is it in the hunger of what Sister Heather bring today that we are jumping and saying that the Lord will provide? But is it not we are seeing that the Lord is saying that we need to be hungry for him? Because when you have him, you have everything. You don't just come for a transaction and God says, here's a handout. But you come and say, God, I want you. And you will always have the handout because he is, he is the provider. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, that as we, as we pray into Matthew 6, 33, Father, that we will seek you. We will be hunger for you. Psalms 42, as a dear person, Father, we will pass after you. Lord, Psalms 127, verse 1, Father, we will allow you to build a house. Because we don't want a house to be built in vain. In fact, Father Lord, help us to build a house of worship before we even attempt to build a house. Help us to build that altar of worship that before we even tend to pick up, Father, any tools to build anything else. Mm -hmm. Help us to realize that, Father, it is the sole purpose of worshiping you that matters, that counts. Hence why the blessing will come. Father, Amen. Lord, I pray as they would say, as the praises go up, the blessing will come down only for the, re the sake and the reason of that we give ourselves over to you. Then you will bless us in any way, shape or form, because, Father, you see in our hearts. And we know that, Father, anywhere our treasures are, there our hearts will be as well. Amen. So we pray in the name of Jesus that you will be our treasure mm -hmm. you will be the focus point you will be the place where we lay our heads where we wake up hallelujah father you will be that place father that place that we run into when we are looking for security hallelujah in fact we're not even running into it father we want to live in there we want to stay in there we don't want to come out father we want to stay there Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. almighty God, who sit on the throne, who's just looking for relationship, Amen. who's looking, Father God, for that, that, that love between one and another, who's looking for the heartfelt worship. Father Lord, I thank you. I know you are a jealous God and you want her attention all the time. I know you're an attention-seeking God. But here we are, Father. Let us be able to give you that attention. Release us from these baggages, from this Amen. shell that we are in. Release us from flesh. Release us from our thoughts and our mindset. Release us from these hunger of the world so we can seek you and see you because we know you will provide all our needs, no matter what time of day it is. No matter if we are broke, Father Lord, hallelujah. No matter if we are rich, no matter if we are sick, you will provide. You will provide. So help us, Lord, not just to have the crazy faith, but to have you. Amen. Because with you, all things are possible. With you, Father Lord, we could do all things through Christ. That strengthens us. With you, Father Lord, we know that there's nothing to that is impossible for God. With you, Father Lord, we could move mountains. We could speak a thing and it comes into being. With you, Father Lord, we know we are secure. We know our hope is laid up in heaven. We know our hope is with you, King of glory. We know our salvation is sure. We know, Father Lord, that the day will come and we will go home with you. So, Father Lord, help us to seek you first <clears throat> and all your righteousness and all doing good to each other and all, Father Lord, that is pertained to practical living down there in the spirit. Hallelujah. Help us to seek you and seek that desire of that life to love on one another, to care for each other. To maintain when one's Father God's hurt, when one's broke, we need to feel it, Lord. And help us that we'll be able to provide for it in the name of Jesus. Because you are the great provider. And through love, we know we can conquer all things. As love covered a multitude of sin. 
So, Father, here we are today, this morning, crying out to you, Amen. calling on to you, saying, Lord, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of always being needy for ourselves and forgetting about you. Forgive us, Father, for we know not what we do sometimes. But we're asking, Lord Jesus, that you make us hungry for you. Hung, I hunger, Father, Lord, that despite whatever the situation is, that we will always focus on you. We will not dwindle to the left or the right, but we will keep our eyes fixed because that's who you made us to be. So, Father, thank you for your word today. And thank you for your blessing today. In the amen. mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Let amen. his word continue. Amen. To be yay and amen. Amen. In Jesus amen. mighty name. Amen. Thank you, uh, Brother Junior. I mean, you said um, uh, there's a lot in what you, what you, you said as well. And um, I just want us to be able to continue um, and to flow into, into what, he, what he said. So we, we should be, be able to be sensitive of uh, each other's need as well. You know, the Holy Spirit should be, be able to speak to us, um, call sister so-and-so today, you know, um, or pray for sis, brother so-and-so today or some, you know, we're connected. Now and again, somebody should drop in our spirit. We may not have their number, but we find a way to get uh, connected uh, through the through the spirit of God. And you know, without the person after you say, "Okay, I need this today," we shouldn't be on here, and we're not sensitive of each other's needs. And our hunger must be uh, first for the things of God, and then He will He will add. He will provide, he will make provision for whatever that desire, you know, that thing that he's put in your heart to do. He will make the provision for it. And also it's a, it's a step of faith. You step out by faith, even though you don't know how it's going to come together, but the Lord said to do this and you step up by faith and he will provide, make the provision. You know, we, we there were so many, uh, nuggets in in what you said and even the the pastor fernandez uh testimony uh this morning and everyone's testimony i want us to be able to go into maybe five ten minutes of worship and uh giving god thanks i'm not sure if keith's hand is up again i think yeah, so Donald wanted to speak. go ahead yeah um yeah real quick um june is like me we always want to share a different perspective, mm -hmm. a different perspective. I'm going to say what I call the ugliest word that we're all mandated to do. You want to know what that word is? Sacrifice. It's that word that makes everybody go, oh, I don't know if I can do that. I mean, yes, I will for you, Lord, but do we though? Do, do we though? Did you, did you notice that the man only had four? I'm using the illustration from what the example, he only had 400 pounds, $400, sorry, let me get it correct. $400, he needed 485, <laughs> so he still would have been short. If you're, to, if you're doing the math and you're trying to process the thousands when he shared the scripture in Deuteronomy, the thousands, it still wouldn't have, if you added, times it by thousands, it still wouldn't have added up, right? There still would have been money missing. But what I'm illustrating is this, the sacrifice. It's not in the cash. We look at that so generically because our God is not an imitating God. What he does for one, he won't do it the same way for another. For we another. need to stop yeah. looking at other people's algorithms and utilizing mm -hmm. that into our lives. Because if God mm -hmm. didn't tell you, you're wasting money. Don't be silly. You're sacrificing to the wrong proceed. But the sacrifice was his mind state. It wasn't the cash. It was his mind state. Amen. Mm -hmm. His mind had to tell him, let go of all the generic. He mentioned about the economy. He had to let go of all of that too, all the deceptions, all the, the concepts, all of what people will tell you and just trust. That is actually the biggest sacrifice that we have to do. 
is sacrifice everything else and just trust. You notice when you're left with nothing, you actually got something. It's to trust. Yeah. Yes. You sacrifice everything else in your, your mental attributes, your human attributes, and you trust onto the supernatural that will change something that we, you could only see as a dream or a movie or a concept. That's super, that's like, words can't fathom it. It's beyond the word super. I always think it's, under, it's undermining what God is using the word super. It's just unexplainable, unfathomable. And if you sacrifice everything of flesh for what you know, that's the comfort zone. Well, you know, 400 pounds could have paid my bills, could have paid my dollars, could have paid my, my, um, my rent, my paid my this, my paid my that. When you sacrifice all of that from just your mind, because remember, we say this a lot as well, is Revelation, sorry, Romans 12 too. Do not be conformed to this world. We do this a lot. We say this a lot. This is another scripture by the junior that we constantly share. Your mind has to be renewed yes, amen. so that when you can sacrifice, we sing the song, trust me, I surrender all, Lord, all to thee, I give, I give, trust me, you know the lyrics, you sing it over and over and you're crying at the same time, I surrender all, but then when a little bit of money comes into your account, when your, your um, rent and everything has to be substituted and taken out, are you going to sacrifice the only little five pounds, six pounds? Oh, but that's, that could be food for tomorrow's lunch. Are you going to sacrifice that too? Or is that just in part? Is that just, uh, are you ready to clear your bank account? Like, like the young ruler in the Bible. Thank you, Lord, for the scripture. Like the young ruler in the Bible had everything. But then he questioned right at the end. And I thought, wow, that's a true testament to how we are as Christians. How we are in our mind states, in anything. We may talk about money. See, it's funny that money seems to be the one thing that we all trip on, but yet it's so many different circumstances. Looking for a wife or a husband, looking for that future baby, that future um, blessing in a house. This is in every circumstance. It doesn't, it doesn't just stand on one point, it's every point. Yeah. Sacrifice. The idea, the concept, stop looking at, oh, well, I would like a man who so-and-so high and so-and-so wide and so-and-so financial and his job and his da 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 Stop looking at the, oh, the woman that, that she's got to be beautiful beyond catalog, beautiful beyond models and beautiful beyond the, no, nah, stop, stop creating the lists because it's, it doesn't enable you to sacrifice because you're actually starting to process what you see before you. We cover it with our eyes. First, you have to look upon it, and now you want it. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. Sorry, that was my grandma talking to me then. But it's, it's, this is the things that we've got to be careful of. First, you want it with your eyes, and now your body and everything does possesses itself. That's a spirit that tries to get you to grasp it. But if you sacrifice even that, and you trust, when all that is left to do is trust, focus on the trusting, like Brother Junior shared, the Matthew 6, 33. Renew your mind that if you have to do this constantly, daily, it's a wake up call. Believe me, that word, everybody's like, yeah, 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 I, I can, I can, I can. No, 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 it's not something you need to respond to. It's something you need to actually take on rhetoric. I can never say the word, rhetorically, <laughs> that you do for yourself. That you don't ask questions, you don't present answers, you just know within yourself that you've got to do it. That one thing that it could be 10 things, in fact, get sacrifice the idea of getting and gaining, sacrifice the idea of looking. Oh, I need to fast for so trust me. When people suggest these things, I do not, I'll be real with you, I do not follow fasts that people are telling, uh, are stating. If a church is fasting, I'll be praying with a church. But I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Because I can't follow algorithms. I've never have, I never could. I'm always outside the box. We are all outside the box. But once you start following these protocols and expecting because you follow the protocol, that's not the case. It's because of your personal sacrifice that you dedicated towards the one who can do all of these things. 
That's the algorithm. It's your personal algorithm, not an algorithm that you see on somebody else's. Because trust me, you could watch a sermon after sermon after sermon. Oh, that pastor did this, that sister did this, that brother did that, that they did this, they did that, and you will copy it. The enemy is an imitator. God is not. God is not. He's an innovator. And he will inspire you to do something strategic. It's like creating a recipe. If I try to make every single person on here is their version of jerk, jerk chicken, for instance, I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail because you know by a pinch of your hand exactly what is in said recipe. But if I was to make my own version and everybody was to try it, it would be dip. Wow, what did you put in this? I can't. It's the exact algorithm. It's the exact algorithm that's necessary for you, for you and God. And you can't leave either of them out. You can't. So you have to sacrifice everything that's been told before you and do and just do. Trust is, is the one thing that I realize with trust. It's not something that needs to be mounted up big. It's not something that needs, it's just something you just action in and do. And I'm hearing it a lot. It's just something you, oh, well, you need to put more trust. Oh, yes, I do have trust. No, no, no. You need to put more trust in. Hear it, realize it, and work upon it. That should be higher than anything that comes in the way. This is the same thing that the pastor illustrated. It came before everything. When they walked through the, trust me, that shop, that shop illustration, I was here cracking up. And I thought, wow, imagine how many times we even, we even have got to the checkout. I thought, yeah, this ain't going to happen. You, yep. you, you turn away and you walk out the shop. <laughs> we sacrificed even what we were going to be blessed with because we sacrificed trust. Do it the other way. Sacrifice the humiliation, the feeling of what wouldn't happen and just trust. Amen. And see what God's will is for your life. Pray, yes. Fast, yes. I'm not discounting any of those things. I have to be very clear about that, but do it according to what God is teaching you to do. And you will see what God's will is for you. Some people don't even hear from God, like, like how some people say, oh, God told me, God said, God, this, God. It's not essential. Just trust in him. It's not yeah. essential because God will not speak to you. And if there's points where you won't listen, if you won't sacrifice even your humanity on the basis of what you know and what people have said and how they engage, he can't speak to that. It's, it's like bouncing off. It's like shouting to a, a, a big, massive hall and it's echo. He's, God's hearing his own echo back. Why would he waste his time on doing that? But he has to wait until you get to a point where, OK, Lord, what do I do? What do I do? Because now you've got to the end. The struggle is not the fact of how far in the struggle you went. It's how far God had to allow you to go for him to see, okay, I'm here. I've been always been here. I've always been watching over you. I've always been covering you that I know you're struggling and I hate that you're struggling. But naivety had to be sacrificed. Everything else had to be removed. Everything else had to be the, the circumstance in which you, you stop and say, Lord, what now do I do? And you have to wait. You have to actually sacrifice in suggesting too. Oh Lord, but I need, I need, I need. He's a knowing God. He's a God that knows all things, yeah. everything. And we, we keep mounting up. Oh Lord, oh boy, I've got to build you on the end of the month. We're talking about the end of the month when we are not there yet. You've got to sacrifice the fear and the panic because there's still days that God can work. God can work the day before. God will work the hour before you look into your bank account thinking, Lord, what do I do? <laughs> we have to sacrifice the mentality. That's why we say die to self. There's so many analogies to that. See, I love what Brother Junior was sharing. Great, very careful. I love what Brother Junior was sharing. But we have to take it into accountability. We have to take it into, wow, what can I do personally? How can I live this personally? How can I focus on this personally? That's how we got a process. Amen. And it's beautiful. Amen. Um, I think Donna wanted to speak, but I see, uh, is it Vol Volki? Sorry, I'm pronouncing your name correct. Is this Sister Volki? Have I got it right? I see your hand it's is okay. 
Yeah, no, I raised my hand. I just realised I may not have enough time to execute it. But just to go off of what Junior um, was saying and his prayer, I think after his prayer, we really needed a minute or two to really soak in what he was saying. Mm -hmm. And Brother Keith as well, talking about God's will. And I think when we're babes in Christian, we're very new. We're always taught, you know, I heard someone else said it, we're always taught or how we've got a giving God a loving God and all of that and we get used to the idea of if we pray and we ask we get and it gets to a point where you don't get and then what do you do with that what do you do with unanswered prayers and a lot of the times there's many different reasons for answered prayers I won't even have time to even go into that but a lot of the times our will is not aligned with God's will like Keith has just said and sometimes it's about fine-tuning that to be able to hear God's voice to know what his will is for you remember the first and foremost thing we were created is to worship God is to honor him and to give him glory now if our life is not reflecting that question mark you know we have to consider Mm -hmm. these things are we are we first and foremost fulfilling what we are created to um, to do all the other stuff is great but that's the first one and if we're praying for something and do not receive do we still give God glory do we only honor him glorify him praise him when we get our answered prayers do we still mm. praise him when it's like oh you know today was a day i was expecting you to come through and then nothing happened what do you do amen that's true that's everything we do in our lack in our abundance is to give god glory anything he gives us and amen. provides for us is to give him glory big or small is to give him glory and we need to learn that habit of giving god glory with or without that blessing yeah. with or without that miracle with or without that gift with or without that and we have to be able to come to a place where we can sacrifice our dreams because amen. his plan for our life is way better and that's amen. where we need to get we all have plans and yes we can you know tell god this is our plan bless me bless the plan blah and i work like that all the time you know mm-hmm. and we have to mature in our faith to get there and know it's remember god is sovereign and he's all part and he knows Amen. you Amen. know we and, and like he's, we, we need to trust we need to trust that he has better for us and learn don't get me wrong, we're flesh so we get disappointed but never stay in that state for too long and, and, and learn to give him glory, even in that disappointment, because that disappointment will yield something greater later on, unbeknown yeah. to you. Yeah. So that's why yeah. all things we give him glory. So I just want to say yeah. that. But I don't have time to go into my other bits, but yeah. I Thank you, uh, Voki. I think you should build on that. There, you've got a lot there to say. So when you when you get the opportunity again, please, continue because I, I could tell that you've got a lot there to say on on that uh there's more so thank you for for that we we don't always hear you but we know you're there so thank you very much for um sharing um i know sister donna wanted i don't know if she's still available to speak um and then i just wanted us to go into just a little time of worship and bearing in mind what sister volki said as well um, while uh, uh, Keith and Junior were speaking and also um, uh, Pastor Grace, I was just, you know, writing down some prior points. Um, one, one of the things that was highlighting is for uh, our minds to be renewed and to also pray for our, our faith. You know, um, this, the Bible says the enemy always seeks to sift us like wheat. wheat. And Jesus uh, said that he prayed for uh, Peter's faith. And, you know, so we can pray for our faith and we can pray for each other's faith as well. And um, so, Sister Donna, did you still uh, want to speak? I know it's school running, all of that going on. Yeah, I'm I'm on the school run. um, I hadn't planned to... I hadn't put my hand up this morning, but what I will say is this, um, mm-hmm. just quickly, um, the, um, the message definitely resonated with me, um, as you know, more recently, not that recent ago, actually, when I think about it, eight months ago, I'd left my previous job where I'd been for almost eight years, and I felt that God had told me that I needed to leave there to, do, to go to somewhere else, and within four days, I had a new job in my hands, even though I'd given in my uh, letter of resignation with no new job 
in place. Amen. Um, and I know, that, I know that was all to God's glory. But through this time, there's been a struggle. Um, on paper, I should be earning more, but because it's an umbrella company I need to pay and I have to pay more taxes and mm-hmm. my expenses are more for various things. My finances have been less and I've been saying to God, every single month feels like a struggle. But you've led me, I, I know it was you that told me to leave that place to come this to this place. So why is it that I'm not seeing, um, I suppose, the benefit of any of this? So why is it not even sustaining? Why do things seem to be getting worse? When I listened to the message today, um, what that really said to me was that even though I can see what I see around me and what my experience is, I mustn't lean into to that. I must just trust God to know that everything is going to work out well in the long term. And I do. I truly Amen. believe that it will Amen. work out well. Um, but it was just that reminder that even though I see what I see in my finances, what, what they are, it will work out well for me in the end. I know. And I believe God with all my heart that they, that, that will be the case. So thank you for your message Amen. today. Thank you. Thank you. And also uh, for those who might have just joined um, and didn't get a chance to see the clip, um, Keith has shared the link in the chat. And um, uh, just in, in mind of that, sometimes um, maybe that's something we can do apart from the the admin, the admin group, maybe we can uh, have a group in, in terms of the people that comes on regular in the mornings and, um, uh, you know, that if there's anything, prior points or stuff that mentioned, I think somebody could put something together, type something up and then the link to the, the um, for example, the link to the songs that were, you know, so throughout the day, if you miss the devotion in the morning, you can, you can still get a snippet of what, because when Keith does the recording for copyright purposes, he can't include like the songs or even the video into that devotion, but you just um, hear. Uh, if you look in the description, I share all the description of everything. So you don't no, just mean, like, look at in the pressing. chat, but yeah. I mean, on the I YouTube. Mean, like, as a WhatsApp, like, uh, like a WhatsApp group with everyone that's on, apart from the admin team, so we can continue that just sharing because some people aren't seeing what's in the chat and then um they might have come on when we're near the closing and i don't want them to miss what we shared this morning they might be able to catch on it at 10 o'clock or something or during the break for the day and it can still minister to them for that day so maybe that's something we can think of doing you know going forward in the next you know couple of weeks or so we can make a note of who's on and just keep uh, just add them with their permission we can invite them to join they have the option if they want to join the group or not and just little snippets of what we share the nuggets for the day you know that you've got the, the devotion some people because of work they were on and they had to jump off because of work and they're not able to speak but they can still be blessed by it. So I just wanted us to, um, I don't know, it, yes, if anyone wanted to pray on renewing the mind, and as I said, pray for Ukraine, and if there's any other particular prior requests. Um, so anyone wants to take renew, renewing the mind, and praying for our faith, and praying for Ukraine, and other requests as they come in. Please, before we just go into just a couple of minutes of worship. Is there is anyone volunteering to pray for any of these PowerPoints? Or should I nominate nominate someone to pray? I'm good to pray. I'm good to pray. It's not. Which, I, which, uh, yeah, after we worship, which one do you want to take, uh, Keith? I'm not bothered. Whatever you want to nominate me to do. I'm a, I'm a person that prays. So it's not a challenge okay. for me to so, pray. On it. Um, you, you could take pray for renewing our Amen. mind. Thank sure. you. And uh, anyone wants to pray for our faith?
So Heather, what, what are the other prayer points? The um, praying for our faith, key to stake and renewing our mind and to pray that our faith doesn't waver, you know, that we will continue to have faith, faith in the Lord and whatever the Lord drops in your spirit concerning our faith, you can pray as the Lord leads. Okay, I can pray. I can and I pray, pray for, for you and praying for Ukraine. Um, what I was sharing initially that with Nebuchadnezzar, he was a king and he, he had displeased the Lord. He didn't obey the instructions, you know, and the Lord put him in a state where he was in his reprobate mind and he was like an animal. He had long nails like an animal. He was ended up out in the fields for a season of time. So what I was saying that is uh, Putin is is flesh like us and God is no respecter of persons and God can deal with, with him. So I was bearing in mind that the times of Hitler I was wondering, you know, what was happening at the time, how effective was the church in praying at that time. And uh, we don't want another situation where war is breaking out. We've just coming out of COVID. And um, I've been hearing a lot of things said on other platforms that this COVID thing was really just a test. It was a test run for something bigger that they want to introduce. This war between Russia and U Ukraine, it's a test. The enemy has, they have something bigger that they're planning to hit us with. But if we, as the people of God, you know, stand in between, in the gap, we're all intercessors on here and we can pray, pray for the people who have been affected by, um, the circumstances at the moment in Ukraine, pray that the families get to save shelter and that, you know, they get taken care of and, uh, you know, stuff like that. So anyone wants to take that on and pray for Ukraine or the crisis, what's going on. And also as the Holy Spirit leads you as well, uh, please. Actually, I would have preferred to pray for over the Ukraine issue, if you don't mind. Okay, yes, you can take that one. Yeah. And um, I could take pray for our faith. Yeah. And so if, if we just saw, I'm bearing in mind the time as well. So I don't know, could we take maybe five to 10 minutes in, and just unmute? And like I said, we can, up to you, we can put that thing on your mind. You know, you, it could have been something the Lord had dropped in your spirit to do and it's been a long time. You haven't seen the manifestation of it. Uh, it could have been a prophetic word that the Lord has given you. It doesn't necessarily have to be about money. It could be about ministry. It could be pertaining to your health. It could be pertaining to business. You know, it could, whatever the first thing that really comes on your mind that you can recall that, hey, that is taking, to, that is taking a while. The good thing is God has not forgotten anything that you have prayed about. I, I know I had a dream some time ago and the Lord reminded me about something that I prayed about. I think I was about maybe 12 years old and how we illustrated it in the dream. We, we don't use Walkmans anymore. You always remember using a Walkman. We don't use Walkman anymore, right? And it, the dream, the prior, whatever I'd asked the Lord was so old that in the dream he was showing me like it's like a, the, the person had a walkman but the lord was saying to me in the dream you might have forgotten about that prior you prayed when you were a child but i haven't forgotten about it and he's bringing it to my remembrance because he's ready to give me the answer for that prior that i prayed about when i was a child and in the dream i saw the person with a envelope uh coming to me with the answer for that prayer. So the dream was for me, but the dream was also for the person because I've never dreamt that person before. And when I was sharing the dream to that particular sister, she could also relate to it that yes, there was something that she asked the Lord for and you know that she had forgotten about and the Lord has been doing some things recently. So she received it and it was a reminder to her that to go forth in something that she wanted to do also 
um, pertaining to her business, you know? So it was a blessing for me and it also was a blessing um, for her. So God hasn't forgotten anything at all that we, we even prayers that we haven't even formulated in words, but it's in our heart, it's in that deep desire, it's in our thoughts, we think about it. And the Lord knows what the innermost part of, of our hearts and of our minds and of our, of our thoughts as well. So um, we just want to unmute and just give God thanks as well. We, we received, it was a really powerful word this morning. Yeah. And we want to, we don't want to be, uh, what you say, false recipients. We want to be able to receive and respond to the word that we received this morning as well by just giving him thanks that we receive it in our heart and our spirit. And we just wanna give him thanks and praise for everything that he's doing concerning us. You know, that uh, he's a good God. I, 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 we, we, we wouldn't ask God for bread and he give us a stone. You know, he's, he's a good um, loving and caring father. And we know that not every request as Sister Volki said as well, not every request that we ask the Lord for is necessarily that what we're going to get also. And even if we don't see the manifestation of that thing, we can still give God thanks and praise because we're just giving him thanks and praise because of who he is and who he is to us. And for that relationship that we have with him, he desires for us to, you know, worship him as, as well. And um, so we're just going to maybe five minutes um, of worship if we, we can all unmute those who are able to, we just give God thanks. And then we just can roll into the prior points. Uh, I think Keith, you can go first. Then I, I could go with prior faith and then Ziri could join in. Thank you. Lord, we can give you thanks. Let's just unmute and give God thanks and, and, and praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we give you thanks this morning. We give you praise, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, because no, there's no good thing that you will withhold from them. Trust the Lord, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord God, for that. Even if He will renew fires in our heart, Lord God, you are concerned about the Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for how to have we don't know. We see that, oh my God, something is taking too long. Too long to manifest. Help us not to get weary in well doing. We give you thanks, oh God, because it's true. You are. We pray to God. We just want to be dependent upon our faith, Lord. You are a mighty God. You are awesome. And we thank you, Lord God, because you are. Thank you. Regardless of the length that I have to reach, regardless of the struggles that I may perceive, I may be angry. Lord, this is not enough. Lord, help us and sustain us in a way that we should cultivate change. Lord, I thank you in advance. Lord. Thank you in advance. Lord. Everything that I need to go to the I can bank to them because of your faith in this door. Thank you, Lord. What an inspiration that you're dependent upon me. You're not just an ATM machine, Lord, because I have to put it in the Lord, let me not just be Lord, but I'm just dependent upon my faith, Lord. Withdraw, withdraw, withdraw. Let me have the ability and the action and the realization that I have to mount up that bank account and continue faithful, Lord. Right. Lord, in fact, all the things that we've talked about, there's things that have crossed people's spirits, things that have crossed people's minds, and things that they require, and things that they need, things that they would like, things that they would want. Lord, you are the type of God that we thank in advance, that you will orchestrate all that's necessary. But let us wait upon you, Lord. Let us wait upon you, Lord. We know that you have promises. And Lord, let us be the ones that are earned the promises. In the name of Jesus, I thank you in advance, O oh Lord. I thank you in advance, O oh Lord, for the goodness that you are going to perform, the goodness that you are going to illustrate, the greatness that has to be there before. I thank you in advance, Lord. I thank you for answered prayer. I thank you for answered joy, answered passion, answered love, answered concern, answered healing, answered blessings in all 
all forms, hell Lord. Answered business requests, answered business attributes, actions, business acqu um, acquisitions, answers business illustrations and establishment, answered jobs. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for all that you're going to do and all that you're about to do, all that you're doing right now, Lord. I thank you, women thoughts. I'm not going to just pray into what I'm, I'm longing for. We're longing for. We're thanking you, Lord, for all that you're going to do next, all that you're going to do now, all that's going to occur and happen. Let us just walk in our trust in you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the wake up call for each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord, for the realization. Thank you, Lord, for the lesson today. Thank you, Lord, for the lessons tomorrow and, and, and onwards. Thank you, Lord, for everything you're about to do. Thank you, Lord, for the changes in our minds and our hearts and our processes. Thank you, Lord, for the new us, the new creature that we are longing to walk into, but never yet considered. Thank you, Lord, for the open doors that we're going to walk through. In fact, so joyous, so happy, so filled with love that we're going to run through. Thank you, Lord, that for the, the things that uh, we've never even conceived that we thought was impossible, but you showed you're possible because you are the I am. Thank you, Lord, for being the I am that's going to show us. Thank you, Lord, that's going to bless us. Thank you, Lord, that's going to breathe into circumstances. Thank you, Lord, for the safe circumstances. Thank you, Lord, for the day that we have right now. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up with tomorrow and the next day. I thank you now in advance. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the, the alterations and everything. Change of character, change of mind state. Thank you, Lord. I'm praying that now. I thank you, Lord, for the day we're about to have, regardless of what we're going to face, see, and perceive, regardless of these things that will try to trap our feet, that will try to lead us to stumble thank you lord for being those hands that's gonna cold us and cug us and keep us out of that miry clay thank you lord for the solving and the the orchestration of things that we never knew were gonna come up today thank you lord i'm thanking you in advance lord thank you lord for the journey we're gonna walk on mentally physically spiritually thank you lord i'm thanking you now lord not tomorrow not afterwards now lord i'm thanking you in advance i'm thanking you right now I don't need you just at the time. I need you right now, Lord. So I'm thanking you now. I'm doing this in advance. Things that I have not even seen or proceeded. Things we as God, as your body of Christ, are not even going to be knowing of today. You've got 24 hours in a day. So I'm thanking you for those 24 hours. Every single hour, minute, second, microsecond. Every single part of it. I thank you for this month, oh God. I thank you for the changes in this very month. And next month, I'm doing this in advance, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the faith that I'm building in that time, in that time, in that time. I'm thanking you now. So the lessons that come in will not be the things that will pull me down. But because of my thanking of you now, Lord, that these are the things that I will be blessed in already. And it's not just the finance, Lord. It's every single part of us. It's not just in the small thing that in, in comparison to what you are doing, it's small. But what you are doing is massive. I thank you, Lord, for the massive, Lord. And I want to look at this the small, minor things. Even a bill, even if you can't pay it, is minor in comparison to what you're going to lead us towards. Thank you, Lord, for what you're leading us toward and getting us through. Thank you, Lord, for overcoming. Thank you, Lord, for the changes that are necessary. Thank you, Lord, for even the punishment. Thank you, Lord, even the correction. Thank you, Lord, for that stain in the back of your mouth that had to be changed when somebody speaks to you. Thank you, Lord, for the great rejuvenation in all and each and every one of us let us take into accountability we thank you lord in jesus name i pray amen hallelujah can you come just continue keith and just flow with renewing the prior renewing your mind could you just flow into that and then i'll just flow right after you and uh ben uh ziri amen amen, amen. heavenly father lord enable us to grow enable us to see let us see our errors, but not in something that we need to put a wall up for, but something that we can just knock them down. I thank you, Lord, for that new concept in our mind. 
It's the concept, it's the perspective that we see first, is what we run along with. If somebody speaks doubt, that's what we run along with. I also pray against the transference of spirit, that when somebody says something, it's not always what's spoken onto you, it's what you do back. I pray, Lord, that we renew our minds, that we can mm-hmm. shut things down, that we can swallow whatever it is that eats us from inside. And we can Amen. utilize our mind. We can utilize what you have grafted us with. The strongest thing in our body is also the weakest thing. That's our mind. That Amen. if we can, through the thought process, as a human thinks, so shall they be. So shall they be. I pray, Lord, that we change that thought. Change whatever it is that's spoken. That we learn, learn to utilize rebuking that we can cancel it off before it takes root in residence of our mind, that we be conscious of what we choose to plant inside our minds. I pray, Lord, that we will strengthen our minds, strengthen it in a way not to be ignorant or frustrated by people, but to utilize the lesson that they're teaching so that we can grow and develop. Because just like a plant, that's a seed that's been planted in the ground, it has to go through many changes. I pray, Amen. Lord God, that our mind will be like the flower, like something so simple as a flower. But before it buds, it has to change its mind state in every single position. It doesn't need the, the ground so much anymore because it started to elevate. And from elevating, from being a, a, a bud from the root, it starts to change into the next section where it starts sprouting leaves, which means it has to continue on a journey and reaching out. But when it starts to elevate even higher than that, before the bud starts to illustrate itself, before it becomes a flower, it has to change its mind state so it can accept what's going on. It has to deal with the blowing of the wind, has to deal with the competition of everything around it, trying to drown it out. It has to process. Thank you for the illustration of the the flower, Lord, because our minds have to be like the nature that's around us. I pray, Lord God, that you will illustrate and infiltrate every single person whose mind is troubled right now, Lord. But even if your mind is not troubled, it doesn't mean that your troubles don't come. I pray, Lord God, that your mind will be refreshed, will be cleansed, will be purified, will be saturated with the goodness of God. I think it's Philip. 4 8 that we consider the things only above lord so that we can remind Amen. ourselves constantly of the good things even in a bad conversation that the good things are the only thing that spouts out don't let us read the aggression let's not read the tone let's not read intention let us take from it what you have blessed us with it that every interaction is used in a positive way Let us receive what's negative, but breathe out what's positive. Let us illustrate these things. Let our mind be saturated, but nothing but goodness. Let our mind be focused upon nothing but goodness. When we see the light, we don't count. We don't count. Look at the shadows. When we are standing in the sunlight, we don't think to ourselves, oh, that shadow over there is creeping up next to us. No, we focus upon the sun. So we look up above what is going to bless us with. I pray, Lord God, that our minds will be like that, that illustration, that we'll be able to just stand in something good, something great, something powerful, something beautiful, something that is nothing but you. I pray pray those who are struggling with mental health that lord i pray that you speak more louder more clearer than any voice any illustration any frustration anything that tries to negate even your faith i pray lord god that even though we are pushing through struggling through in every different circumstance i want to pray for every person in every single particular form and lord if i forget somebody lord recall it to memory i pray lord god that your minds our minds will be strengthened in a way so we can put that that full armor on we can put that helmet of salvation on and we don't take it off not even while we sleep before we sleep we put it on and we leave it on i pray lord god that the mind inside that helmet will be strengthened will be empowered that even when the blows and the strikes will try to illustrate they will bounce off just like the helmet they will not even have an ability to saturate i pray lord god over every single thing that even if we're in modes and places where things are very dark and when you leave there you feel drained did you know that it starts from the mind 
Did you know that it starts in the mind for a person to feel drained, even in a conversation, a long conversation with somebody who may be spouting negative? I pray that we will look for the good, that we can instill the good in no matter what we're hearing with other people. Let us be conduits of you, Lord God. So even while we go out and help our brothers and our sisters and hear what they're going through, we will be able to stand up for the good and hear the Christ through the conversation, hear the prayer points that they may need. Refresh our minds, oh God. Cleanse our minds, oh God. Saturate our minds, oh God. Anything that the enemy has planted, we uproot and cast it back to sender with Christ fire following it. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that anything in the camp that the, the enemy that is trying to be utilized and used against us will profit nothing. Like Gideon, when he shouted with such a praise, with such an illustration, that nothing but in the camp was confusion. I pray, Lord God, that we will send back confusion when the enemy tries to present itself. So our mind is strengthened by what you have presented in us. Speak unto us, oh God. Talk to us, oh God. Show us oh God so we can correct the things that our mind tries to conjure up let us not be workers and talkers of evil let us not be ones that will illustrate and fabricate and, and form and Lord if we're doing so let us repent let us be, be correct in our mind state and take authority for what we think first off what we do second off and how we present ourselves because we are supposed to be pinnacles and beacons of you i pray lord god that our minds will be saturated but nothing but goodness today i pray lord god that we'll be refreshed cleansed new like when we come out of a shower let that be like our minds that we feel good about yourself let that mind state be the revelation and the echoing to how you're going to live your life how you're going to walk in your life how you're going to walk today how you're going to walk tomorrow how you're going to walk continuously let us be the light of the earth lord god but it starts in the mind i pray of every challenge let us not be coming against anything no weapons form shall prosper Nothing, every attack of the mind, I quench it in the name of Jesus. I sever it in the name of Jesus. Those fiery arrows that will be firing at you no matter where you go, even if it's a glancing look when you're walking down the high street, I pray that your mind will be so saturated with Christ that you don't even see it. You will be cleansed of it. You won't even saturate or process any of it. Let us not consider what others are thinking but only consider what you know of yourself. We are beautifully and wonderfully made, oh God. Beautifully and wonderfully made. And because we're beautifully and wonderfully made, our mind should not be troubled. And I pray that we will not trouble ourselves because nothing worse than the enemy within. I pray, Lord God, that we will be able to be clear, pure and fuel, and fuel, filled, ready for you, oh God, so that we can just work in your hands. Teach us in the way to go so we do not depart from it. We are all children unto you, oh God. So we need to refresh ourselves with you constantly, daily, hourly, that regardless of what, we can stand in your light and be of your light so we can share the light and shine the light upon other people and their circumstances. I pray that our minds are renewed unto what you're standing us in, strengthen us in because of you, Lord, we still stand. I pray for those with mental acuities that they may feel that that's the circumstances and they blame the, the circumstances that they're in, but Lord, you can change their minds too. You can alter their minds too. I pray for those with mental health issues and there's a lot of people crossing my spirit but I don't have to name them one by one Lord you know them all I pray Lord God that those who are trapped by their mind those who are trapped in the process I've got nothing against medication because Lord you know I'm a researcher and I look deeper but Lord I pray for each and every one of them that they won't be forgotten they will not be left by the wayside they are still usable, even in the vicinity that they are. Those in mental hospitals, those in places where they're considering putting people into mental hospitals because of the work that they need to do. I pray, Lord God, that you will free their minds, set them free. I pray, Lord God, that your truth will set them free. Let the truth of even themselves beyond what the world is saying to them, those in the vicinity in their atmosphere are saying to them, I pray, Lord God, that your truth will set them free. In the name of Jesus, I pray, refresh our minds, empower our minds. Let us be like, like the, 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 the opposite between David and Goliath. Let us be as strong as the Goliath is or was. Let us be that strong person because of the mind state that we have. 
but having the ability, the function and the connectivity of David. I pray the revolt role reversal. I pray that in the name of Jesus, that we don't just perceive things and seeing them only as enemies, but they can be used for good. Romans 8, 28. I pray anything that is encountering us, coming against us, sieging our minds will be broken down today, will be cut down today. The wall of Jericho through praise broke down, shut down, but we don't consider that we may be the ones that are mounting that wall of Jericho around our personal lives so it becomes a mental wall i pray that wall will be broken we speak to that wall and we tell it to go in the name of jesus we pray the mind and every single thing that will try to present itself that nothing no weapon formed it says in your word lord even ones we cultivate ourselves we bring great but break them down in the name of jesus i pray amen and amen amen Lord, we thank you once again for this morning, Lord God. And I know in the scripture you said uh, uh, that the enemy seeks to sift us like wheat, but you've gone ahead and you've prayed for our faith. Lord God, and we ask you this morning, oh Lord, let our faith arise in you, Lord God, so that the enemies, the enemies of our soul can be scattered. The enemies, Lord God, that will prevent us from hoping again and from having an expectation in you as our God and our savior and as our friend, Lord Jesus, and, and as the person who was our ultimate source. Lord God, anything that will come against that faith, it could be faith in terms of our belief system, faith in you as a God. When we see uh, everything that is happening in and around us, even the atrocities in the world, Lord God, it's sometimes that can be enough for somebody's faith to waver and to question, is there really a God? But Lord God, help our faith to stand firm. Help us to stand firm in what we believe in. Help us to stand firm in what you told us. Help us to stand firm in the spoken word, the written word, something that we might have read in the scripture that has uh, taken root in root in our uh, in our spirit, Lord God, and we hang on to that thing as as our uh, premise of belief. Lord God, help our faith not to be shaken, Lord God, because of the times that we're living in and what we're seeing on the news and what we're seeing around us. Help us to hold firm, Lord God, because when the dark days uh, that are ahead of us, we don't know what is gonna happen a week from now, two months from now. You would uh, think that people would have a value and respect for life, seeing that we've lost so many lives just during the last two years of COVID. And even just the thought that they didn't care that they were in a lockdown and they had to be in a shut-in because of the very air that we, we breathe was contaminated. And now they, they, their mindset in, in such a different way. That's why you have said, Lord God, that the heart of man is desperately wicked because how could you now want to um, destroy a, a person's place of habitat and, and, and home even after, it's not just one country that was affected, the whole world was affected by this uh, um, pandemic and yet still we're, having a situation um, where, you know, bombing and so on is, 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 is going on and people have to be fleeing for their lives. So Lord God, that, those things can uh, uh, make our faith waver and, and wonder if there is a God. But Lord God, you know just how to bring about a revival. You know how to get the word and the Bible and the message of Christ through to people who have never heard of you before. Lord God, if this is a way and an opening for you to revive your people again and to get the message of the gospel through to the people in Ukraine or into even to Russia and other parts of the world, then let it be because the church will never die and your purpose will always go forth. So we thank you, Lord God. I know you had dropped into my uh, spirit um, about, you know, the sometimes the the kingdoms of this world will can uh oppress us and weigh us down you know like the different the de de departments uh when i was i was just looking on the website and they're um 
23 ministerial departments or government bodies like within within the UK and from that there's subdivisions you know Lord, but I just just touch on the main ones that the the, the department of uh, education the finance the transportation system uh, the healthcare system, you know, Lord God, just the, the main, the ones, the charities, you know, all these uh, departments that are uh, affect us in some way or, or the other, you know, they they control uh, some of the, the our movements and our actions. Lord God, so we ask you, Lord God, so these systems that are, you know, designed to oppress your people and to weigh us down. We pray, Lord God, that you lift the weight and the burden uh, of us that is, you know, as a result of, of, of these uh, economic uh, system. And um, I saw someone posted uh, that, I think it was in the, in Jamaica, actually, it's the fifth consecutive year that they haven't raised any taxes and and so on, on on the people and i realized that come april um which may be something it can be another prior point as well but come april they're planning to raise the um national insurance i think from 13 percent to 15 percent now if a lot of people have lost work and a lot of people had to leave jobs and find new ways of working and a lot of people are unemployed. Now, uh, for me, if those are some of the measures that they're coming in. There's another weight and oppression on the people because are they also going to in increase your uh, salary ban as well to be able to cover for, for, for these uh, extra taxes and expenses that you have to pay? You know, it's another weight and oppression on, on the people. It's a uh, a system and a kingdom that was designed to suppress the people of God. So we pray, Lord God, that, you know, just as uh, Jamaica can celebrate five consecutive years of no tax, we pray, Lord God, for the economic system and for those who are in powers and for those who are making the decision, Lord God, that the Holy Spirit will move into the places of parliament and, and cause a shift Cause a shift, Lord God, because I don't think they're probably just looking at stats and figures, but they're not really genuinely looking at the 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 weight that these are. Uh, this is causing uh, uh, upon our uh, people and upon people's pockets and the people financial uh, status and 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 well being. Um, you know, you're working, but you're not able to enjoy the, the fruits of your labor. Um, that's in a, that's an oppressive system, and that can uh, weigh us down and cause our faith in God to, you know, diminish. But help us, regardless of what um, restraints that we face, that our faith will not wither. Lord God, help us to do the things that will continually build our faith. Lord Jesus, by constantly reviewing testimonies of victories, testimonies of breakthrough, testimonies of, oh my God, God can do this. He did it before and he can do it again. Help us to, you know, build our faith through the written word as well, the scripture and the focus uh, and the word when we come together in our devotion. There is always a word, you're always speaking and help us to continue to build our faith, Lord God. And even when we go through our own our personal uh, situation, help us, Lord God, not to think that's the time that, okay, I'm not coming on devotion. I'm not coming on the platform this morning because I'm going through this. That is, the, that is what the enemy desires for us to do, to withdraw and be uh, uh, in our own. And when the enemy has us on our own, that's, that's when he's able to attack even more. But that's the time for us to really, really be even more, even if we come on and we cannot say even amen, but we are hearing the word and our spirit is hearing the word and it is doing something on our behalf more than what we even, even realize in the moment because we might not feel it. And we cannot even go by how we feel because we hear by faith and we believe by faith. So help us, Lord God, to be able to receive by faith what you have downloaded in our spirit this morning. Help us to receive it and to grab a hold of it. And help us not to um, have a proud spirit. Help us to be humble. Help us not to be proud and think that, okay, 
you know, when God, oh, help us to be sensitive, Lord, to the spirit. When God, when you send someone to us and when you connect us with some Lord God, help us to be sensitive that the Lord is trying to say something to you here or the Lord is trying to get a message to us here. Sometimes we miss our opportunities because we're not sensitive in the spirit of what God is doing. Sometimes you cannot always say out loud, this is what you're doing because you're very strategic. I tell you, we are the answer to someone else's prayer. And we, some, we, 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 the more we realize that, the more we will uh, get up with this day and going out knowing that I am the answer to someone's prayer. I might be the answer to someone's prayer just to even get a meal today. Um, you know, so when I get dressed and go out, yes, I have my agenda, but I could be the answer to someone's prayer. Maybe somebody might be standing next to the shop that is hungry today, and I need to be able to be sensitive to know that I am responsible for feeding that person today. Help us to have that mindset that we are the answer to someone else's prayer. And likewise, uh, someone has whatever we prayed for, it's in the hands of someone else. And sometimes what we release from our hands, the Lord, the Lord is sometimes waiting for us to release something that is in our hands or in our heart. It could be a kind word. It doesn't have to always be money, but somebody else has got the answer that we have been praying for. And the moment we release that thing in obedience to the Holy Spirit, then that thing that we're waiting on will also be released uh, to us. So help us to be sensitive uh, in the spirit. There's a lot, a of, lot, a lot of nuggets from the devotion this morning that we can, we we can take away from. And let us, our heart, just meditate on the word today that we will be able to receive. Lord God, sometimes a lot of us we're good at giving and we're not good at receiving. We, we, you know, help us to receive also by faith. Even before seeing the manifestation, we receive. And we've already given you thanks this morning. We've given you thanks by faith for what we're going to receive. And we give you thanks by faith, even us, not just for receiving, but because of who you are. Because of who you are to us, Lord God, and because you are our God and you desire for us to worship you without any agenda or anything on our mind, we give you thanks this morning and we give you praise and we glorify your name for what you're going to continue to do through us. We're continuing to evolve. We're continuing to grow and you're, 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 you're forming us and you're shaping us in your own image and likeness. Sometimes you have to put us back on the potter's wheel again and reshape us because sometimes we go out to shape, we might get knocked down on this side and you know got chipped on that side, but you know how to put us back together again. So I pray for our faith this morning that our faith will arise and our faith will increase and our expectations and hope will not be deferred in you this morning for whatever situation across the board, across the platform. And Lord God, we even in the nations, Lord God, we bring them to you. We thank you once again for the man and woman of, of the house, um, Pastor Chris and Pastor Grace as well. And we thank you also for Mikkel as well. I pray for their faith, Lord God, that their faith will continue to arise, Lord God, because we know that they've been through uh, a trying season in the last year, Lord God. And Lord God, it takes time. It takes time for healing and it takes time for, for, for them to be able to see the bigger picture and, it, and to even to let go because Lord God, that was something very precious and dear to their hearts, Lord God. But I pray for their faith this morning that they will not lose hope and that they will uh, <clears throat> grow from strength to strength, Lord God, that their faith will increase and the strength, Lord God, the supernatural strength, because it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by your spirit. Lord God, and we pray that you will pour into them and pour into the rest of the family, Lord God. Pour into her brothers, Lord God, that they will have that hope in you, that they can walk on the road and not just a fake smile because they don't want to talk about it or because they don't want to have a long conversation, but they can have a genuine, genuine smile on their on their hearts and, and their, their face can lit up and let them be able to be glowing in the midst of everything that's going on. Let there be a glow on, on Pastor Grace's face. Let there be a glow on Pastor 
Chris face. Let there be a glow on Miguel's face, face this morning. Face this morning. Let there be a glow on her our siblings face this morning and the extended family and even the church family this morning as we continue to remember her in our thoughts and to remember their daughter in our thoughts and in our spirit and lord god whatever we can do to keep the her memory alive and what she stood for you know i even thought i was gonna um dance to the song this morning based on how it ministered to me and how i was feeling yesterday but lord god it it didn't go that way this morning but we we lift them up before you lord god and we surround them with our love lord god and we ask you lord god just to fortify their walls lord god build a wall of protection around them that the enemy will find no no avenue no route no area no crack nowhere to come in Lord God, because they still have to be sitting in front of us and standing in front of us and do ministry. And it's not easy to do ministry when so many things and, and pain and so many things is going on, even in their personal life, Lord God. But just like the minister shared this morning that you, wherever you have asked us to go, there is provision. You didn't say that it was gonna be easy, but you are with us, Lord God, and you have, people destiny help us lord god so lord god connect the right people to this ministry lord god who are destiny help us who will come together with the vision that you have placed on pastor chris and pastor grace heart and the vision that you have set before them it will not be uh aborted it will be accomplished by the the grace of god and the spirit of the lord is with is with them this morning. And we thank you, Lord God, for those who you're gonna connect, not people that are gonna waste time, not people that are gonna smile and say, yes, I'll do it. And then, you know, they don't show up. That people who will be able to take the vision and the baton and run with it, Lord God, because the vision is great, God, but you say the, the, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Help us to, even those who are around and participate with joy, on our hearts, Lord God, with joy and a genuine joy and smile on our face, Lord God, because a reward comes from heaven. So we thank you, Lord God, for what you started and what you're going to continue to do in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, and amen. Keith, you amen. Not Keith, Aziri, you could just flow. Amen, thank you. Amen. Father Lord, we thank you um, amen. for your goodness and mercies. And as we present, um, Ukraine and Russia before you. We pray for Ukraine, pray for Russia. We also pray for Lord, our world in general, Lord. Amen. We pray against the uh, wars. We pray for the Lord, you know, the human, um, humanitarian crisis that has um, arisen as a result of this, um, whatever is going on in Ukraine, uh, between Ukraine and Russia. People have been displaced from their homes. You know, People have lost their homes. People have lost their lives, family members, friends, loved ones, Lord. And this is heartbreaking, Lord, we know. So we pray that, Lord, you will please send your spirit, Lord, over to comfort all who mourn. We pray that you will comfort those who might be hiding in, uh, you know, in unusual places for their lives. You know, children that have been shaken, traumatized by this experience, Lord. We pray for the old and aged, you know, who are not even able to move. Perhaps some might have been yeah. abandoned while their family members ran. Maybe they just, you know, confine them to whatever place, Lord. Of course, this breaks your heart, we know. But Lord, you didn't bring it upon us. We did. Human beings did. So we pray for grace. We pray for miracles, Lord, that life should be saved miraculously, Lord. Lord, take care of the aged. Take care of the wounded. Take care of the very vulnerable ones, Lord. All about people who are sick in hospitals, Lord. Amen. We pray that, Lord, you please release grace, release grace, release grace. We rely on you, Lord. Whatever you will do, Lord, do to alleviate the pains and the sufferings going on for the Lord in Ukraine. We also pray for some other parts of the war that the war is going on, even has been going on, you know, for ages, like Congo and other places, maybe in Asia, Lord. We pray against every oppression, every 
suffering for the Lord upon humans, brought upon by humans, Lord, people who are persecuted for their faith and belief. We pray that, Lord, you would intervene. Please hear our cry and intervene, Lord. Amen. As by the root cause of this problem, Lord, we are careful not to take sides. We are careful not to demonize any party because we don't really know the whole story, Lord. When we listen to pro-Russian media, they tell a different story. When we listen to anti-Russian media, they tell a different story. We are not taking sides, but we say, Lord, you are the God of all flesh, and you know the truth, Lord. You know what is going on. There shouldn't be any reason for war, but Lord, you also know whatever the plan of the enemy is against our world. You know, we had COVID a while ago and all their plans, whatever it was, we prayed and it unraveled. And now it's like um, they, they are retreating or the COVID army are retreating. All their threats of uh, compulsory vaccination, this and that, but Lord suddenly is crumbling. And Lord is just um, surprising that just as the, that retreat is taking place, another one starts up this Ukraine and Russia issue. My prayer, Lord, is we don't know what is really going on, but you do. So we pray that, Lord, for those of us who have a relationship with you, open our eyes to see better, to see clearer what is actually going on. You know, the actual deeds behind this small screen that we are seeing, Lord, you know, behind the media attention, help us to actually understand what is going on so that we can pray aright and also so that we can be prepared because we don't really know what the plan is, Lord. We we'll call upon your name, Lord. Unravel every evil plan, Lord. Because only recently, um, it, it was reported that um, Putin had bombed a, a, a lab that they are building a biological whatever in Ukraine. Now we didn't know about that. So we don't really know what is going on, Lord. We're asking you, Lord, we are watchmen for our world. This world cannot be destroyed by man, Lord. It will, it, will, it, will, it will continue to exist up until the time that you have ordained for it. And only your plans will come to pass. So as your children, we cry out to you, Lord. We're not taking sides with any parties. And we're saying, Lord, the world belongs to you. Any plan that is contrary to your purpose for this world will come against it, Lord, that it may not prosper. Or let your will be done. In everything, Lord, you said all things work together for our good. So let this situation in Ukraine work out together for the good of those who love you. We pray for the salvation of the world, as it were, because things have been happening that we are not aware of. We know that nothing happens in the physical that is not first orchestrated in the spiritual. So this war in Ukraine, what spiritual undertone is there to it? We don't know. Open our eyes to know so that we might be prepared. Open our eyes to know so that we might also pray a right, but we also pray that, Lord, you would overrule over every intentions of man and prove yourself God, that the whole world may know that you are indeed God. So far, Lord, you've been relegated to the background. All the cries for help, Lord, in the media, nobody has mentioned you. Nobody has actually, nobody has said, let's pray, except for those of us who are praying in our little, little enclaves. But in, in seeking solution, no, no president, no head of state, no you and nobody has mentioned you. Because in the world you created, Lord, you have been relegated to the background, almost non-existent. But we pray that you would use this situation and many other situations, Lord, to reveal yourself to the unbelieving world that they may know that you are indeed God, that this world didn't just come out of a bang, that you created it, Lord. You've done it, Lord, in, in, in years past, Lord. You've abased kings, Lord. You showed Pharaoh your hand. I pray that, Lord, even in this situation, Lord, re reveal yourself that the head and lead and presidents of the world we know and even affirm with their own lips as Nebuchadnezzar did, as even as Pharaoh did, that indeed Amen. God is God. So we look to you, Lord, in all things. And we know that, Lord, you would intervene. We know that you reign supreme. We know that you remain in control. And that is why we come to you. 
We bless your name, Lord, that we have you to call to. We cry to you this morning on this platform, Lord, over the Ukraine-Russia issue, and we pray for the world in general. And we say, Lord, in no time, do something, Lord, that the world will know that you are God. And even we that we have prayed, we would then be further encouraged. We would then even testify, yes, our Lord has heard us. All of this we ask in your most holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you all for participating, those who, who have. And um, I'll, I'll hand back to Pastor Grace. And just a reminder for uh, those of you who might want to watch the video again, it's it's in the chat. He to share the link. And um, I'll hand back to Pastor Grace at this moment. Thank you. Pastor Grace, I think she's on. Amen. <laughs>